folder and said that he would ask me some questions about this. Good afternoon. Today is Wednesday, November 10th. And we are here at the JCC in Houston for our weekly lunch and learn. And uh, this week, Harshad Vayetze, we are going to be uh, studying an interesting uh, topic uh, called Ein Me'arvin Simcha Bisimcha, that we do not mix one simcha, one joyous, happy occasion with another joyous, happy occasion. We keep our, our occasion separate. And uh, we'll see in a minute what the connection between this uh, halacha, this law is, and, uh, and the parsha. Uh, but let's start with the first. Has anyone ever heard of this concept before? Anyone here in person? You have? In what context, Marilyn? Um, when our twin grandsons have a spritz, that had to do one. Okay. How'd they separate between the two? I don't, I don't know. I think they just did the whole ceremony and then went out and then started. Okay, good. Ellie, have you ever heard of this before? Okay, we'll see. Great. Okay. Um, how about anybody online? Has anybody online heard of this concept before? Ein ma'arvin simcha b'simcha shula that we do not mix two simchas together. Shula, you're you're muted. Is this the same as not dancing on two weddings? Okay. Yes. Yeah, that, that, that could come from it. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, Shula, go ahead. Yes, I heard about it. I don't know why you're connecting it to the parasha, but then. Um... Uh, you'll see in a moment. You'll okay. see in a moment. We'll get there. Shweya, shweya. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Here we go. So let's start with the with the with the text. Uh, and if you want to follow, it's on your screen. If you're at home, uh, you have a paper in front of you. If you're here live, but it's also on the large screen. So, the Gemara Masechet Moed Katan says. Udein ma'arvin simcha v'simcha minalan. The Gemara had, had noted this and now wants to know what is the source for the principle that one may not mix one joy with another joy? Where, from where do we derive it? Dichtiv. And now the Gemara explains that the source is as it is written. And this is in Milachim Aleph, Kings 1. Dichtiv. Vayas shlomo ba'etahi etachag. V'chol Yisrael imo kahal gadol milavo chamat ad nachal mitzrayim l'tnei Hashem alokeinu. So Solomon held the feast at that time, and all of Israel with him, a great congregation from the entrance of Chamat to the brook of Egypt, before the Lord our God, shivat yamim v'shivat yamim. That's key. Seven days and seven days, arba'a asar yom, for a total of fourteen days. So the Gemara is interested in this pasuk. Why there were, what's going on here is the temple, the Beit HaMikdash was being dedicated, right? The Beit HaMikdash was being dedicated and it was also Sukkot. And since everyone had to be in Israel anyway for Sukkot to fulfill the mitzvah of Aliyah Regel of going up to Israel during the festivals, why didn't Shlomo just fold in the dedication of the Beit HaMikdash into the uh -huh. Sukkot holiday. Yeah. Right? Why don't he just fold it in into the Sukkot holiday and just have seven days instead of 14 days? And that's what the Gemara says. V'im ita dimma'arvin simcha v'simcha. And if it is so that one may, in fact, mix one joy with another joy, iba'i lei lemintar ad hechad. He should have waited until the festival of Sukkot, which was the second set of seven days, and made a feast, one feast of seven days for this and for that. And you see in the explanation for the dedication of the temple and for the festival of Sukkot together. The fact that he did not do so indicates, indicates that one must not mix one joy with another. So there were two joyous occasions here. One was a function of the calendar, right? It was Sukkot. 
and one was a function of the timing in which the Beit HaMikdash was completed, and they happened to have coincided. But instead of making one party, right, one seven-day celebration, or one celebration, uh, Shlomo HaMelech ordains a seven-day celebration for the Beit HaMikdash, and then another, and then after that, a Sukkot. Okay? There was and another Simcha, Rabbi. There was that? There's another Simcha, Simchat Bet HaShoiva. Uh, yeah, but that's part of the Chag. I'm not sure. That's a good question. I'm not sure if that counts as an independent Simcha, but because that, that's part of the, the celebration. We call it Simchat Bet HaShoiva, but that's part of the uh, regular uh, Sukkot celebration. Right, so right, so it's it's inconvenient. People have to be away from their house for a long time, uh, but nonetheless, the, the, you had no choice because the halacha is ein ma'arvin simcha v'simcha. We do not mix one joy with another joy. Okay, that's the principle. Now let's let's look at how this is connected to this week's parsha. So in this week's parsha, we are introduced to the Jewish wedding, right? Yaakov marries Rachel and Leah. Everyone, we're aware of that, right? Yaakov marries Rachel and Leah. And in uh, Perak Chavtet, in chapter 29 of, uh, of, of Genesis, here you go, Mir. Um, we're told about Yaakov's journey. He continues his journey. And uh, when he gets to uh, his brother, he gets to uh, Lavan's house, um, uh, he says, I'll read it to you. You don't have this in front of you. He, he, he's, he's there for a while. It says, When he had stayed with him for a month's time, You've worked for me all this time for nothing. What shall your wages be? Lavan had two daughters. The oldest one was Leah. The younger one was Rachel. Rachel Leah had weak eyes, and Rachel was shapely and beautiful. He says, I will serve you for seven years so that I could marry your daughter, Rachel. I'd rather give her to you than somebody else. That's sort of like like a really backhanded compliment, but whatever. Uh, you, I guess you know, it, you could be. It could be worse. So I'll take you. Sheva uh, imadi, stay with me. Vayavod Yaakov Rachel Sheva Shanim. So now we have a real fast forward here, right? Seven years go by in the span of one pasuk. He works for Lavan for seven years, but they were quick. Vayu be'enav ki yamim achadim. Right? Maybe that's why the Torah doesn't spend any time about those seven years, because even in Yaakov's mind, they were super quick because he loved Rachel. Okay. Okay, seven years passed. Please give me my wife. It's time for us to get married. He makes the whole party, and then we know, of course, that he does the old switcheroo. Right? And he switches in Leah for Rachel. And uh, Yaakov wakes up in the morning. This is one of the strangest stories, I think, in uh, all of the history of humanity. Right. Good. What are you doing? How could you do this? I worked for Rachel. How could you have tricked me? He says, well, it's not right to, to marry off the younger one before the older one. And then he says, in this pasuk that you have now in front of you on source number two in the source sheet and on the screen, Malay Shavua Zot, Vinitna Lecha Gam et Zot, Ba'avoda Asher Tavori Madi, Od Sheva Shanim Achirot. Let's wait a week. And after a week, I'll give you Rachel on condition that you owe me another seven years. So the Gemara and other sources say that this is another source for this notion of not mixing one simcha with another simcha, because we know that the seven days after the wedding huh. is the period of celebration of Sheva Brachos. What did, what did Yaakov want? Yaakov wanted to marry Rachel that day. He wakes up in the morning, 
he realized he had the wrong wife. He says, hey, Lavan, what's going on? Lavan says, it's not right to marry off the, the younger before the older. So Yaakov's thinking, okay, great. I married Leah. Now I could take Rachel. I can marry Rachel. And Lavan says, wait a week. Who knew that, Who knew that Lavan was such a, a stickler for this halacha, right? Wait a week. And then you could marry, then you could marry, uh, then you could marry Rachel. So that's the connection between this mitzvah, this, this halacha, and this week's, uh, and this week's parsha. And we'll see it's explicitly noted in the Rambam's Mishnah Torah, source number three. It's on the screen and it is in front of you. Mishnah Torah, Hilchot Ishut, the laws of marriage. Mutar la'areis b'chol yom chol afilu b'tishaba. Interesting, one is allowed to uh, marry a woman on any week, even on Tishaba. Um, it's Erusin, really. It's the beginning of the marriage. It's not the, the end of the marriage. It's not the, cons- it's not the, the, it's the, it's sort of like engagement. Even on Tisha B'Av, Ben Bayom Ben Balayla, Aval Ein No Sin Nashim, Lo Be'erav Shabbat. But with regards to weddings, right, the second part, the, the wedding part, we do it all together now under the chuppah, but it used to be separated. Now, when it comes to weddings, we do not get married on Erev Shabbos, Lo Be'echad B'Shabbos, and not on Sunday either, which we don't follow this, by the way. Gezeira Shema Yavo Lidei Chilul Shabbat, Betikun Haseida, we're concerned that if the wedding is on Friday or on Shabbos, if it's on Friday, the wedding preparations are going to spill over into Shabbos. And if it's on Sunday, people are going to get ready before Shabbos is over. Right? So we don't do those weddings on those days. And certainly we do not get married on Shabbos. Now, here we go. Even on Cholom we do not marry, right, the intermediate days of Sukkot and Pesach. We do not have weddings, as he explained. We do not mix. What, like, remember, like Shlomo? Shlomo would not do the, the dedication of the Beit HaMikdash on Yom Tov, that, or on Cholomoid, because that was a mixture of two, of two joyous occasions. Similarly here, too, we do not get married on Cholomoid, because it's the mixture of two, it's the, of two happy occasions. And what's the Rambam's proof for this? Our Pasuk. Shene'emar, Malay, Shivua Zot, Vinitna Lecha Gamet Zot. Let's wait a week, says Lavan, complete the week of celebration of this one, and then I will give you the other one. Other days you can get married as long as you spent at least three days preparing for the wedding feast. Okay, so we see that uh, notwithstanding the Gemar and Masechet Moed Katan, which um, seems to be a, a more clear halachic source, nonetheless, the Rambam, when he brings this halacha, at least here, he says it's based on our Parsha, Lavan's uh, insistence on waiting a week uh, to let the Sheva Brachos, so to speak, for Rachel, for Yaakov uh, and Leah to pass, before Yaakov can marry Rachel. Okay, comments or questions? Yes. Yeah, so, right, here's how it works. He waited, he worked seven years. He thought he was gonna marry Rachel, but he woke up in the morning and surprise, it was Leah. Then he waits a week, marries Rachel, and then owes another seven years. So it's seven, wedding, wedding, seven years, wedding, seven days, wedding, seven years. So I'm surprised uh, he didn't just run, run out with his two wives. And, and leave him, uh... Well, he was, a, he was an honorable person, Yaakov. Yeah. And so he didn't, he, a deal's a deal, even though, you're right, even though uh, Lavan was, um, hold on one second, I got you one second, Nitsa. even though uh, Lavan was not honest. Right. He, he accepted the deal. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Ah, great question. We're going to get there. Excellent. I don't have a list. What qualifies as a simcha? Like, I, it's not a birthday party. Like, you're allowed to have a birthday party on Kolomoa. So it's not like food brings you joy, so it's a simcha. Okay, we'll see. Excellent question. We'll see. Hold on. Hold on. Yes. Uh, Nitsa, yes. We do not hear the question from the people around you. 
Ah, okay. So the first question was just to clarify. The first question was to clarify the timeline, which was Yaakov worked seven years for Lavan, thought he was going to marry Rachel, ended up marrying Leah, waited seven days, then married Leah, and then married Rachel, and then had to work another seven years to pay off the debt for Rachel. And the second question was, what constitutes a simcha? This is an excellent question. So what, what, what two things, or what one thing exists that another simcha cannot, uh, cannot be celebrated at the same time? Okay, so that's what's on that. Do you have your own question, Nitsa? No, I couldn't hear the other question. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try to remember to repeat them. Here's another question. Yeah. So what constitutes the simcha? We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Oh, oh. Good question. Right. Great question. So the question is just because Lavan waited seven days, how does that become something for, for us? So I think the answer is that it seems that this tradition to wait seven days was uh, common amongst all people. And, but, but in fact, we did, we did pick it up, right? Because we know we do have that seven day period after the wedding. So um, now that seven day period after the wedding, I don't think has the, has the force of a Jeoraita, right? Has the force of a biblical commandment, I, I think. Um, but nonetheless, it is something that we, it is, is a practice that we did continue from ancient times, right? Even though God did not declare it so, it's something that we continued and, 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 and still continue. So that's a, that's a really very interesting point. Are there other examples of things that are done without a direct, a direct command by God that, that we continue to do, like things that people did in the Bible? Um, Right. I mean, here's an example. Here's an example. Uh, we like this one, but Yaakov, right, uh, has has the fight with the angel, and injures his 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 uh, sciatic nerve, and then the, the Torah says right there, because of that, we don't eat the sciatic nerve. Now, there's no indication that Jacob stopped eating the sciatic nerve. And there's no commandment by God not to eat the sciatic nerve. Now, based on this, the Rambam points out, and this is very interesting, that if you take, if you take the example of not eating the sciatic nerve, the Gid Hanasha, and, and even Brit Milah, right, those things were commanded slash happened before the Torah was given. So the Rambam says the only reason those things are binding is because it must be the case that later on God commanded it. We do not do a Brit Milah because Avraham did a Brit Milah. We do a Brit Milah because sometime after, sometime later, meaning when God was giving us laws, he told us to do a Brit Milah. We don't refrain from eating the sciatic nerve because of Jacob's fight with the angel. We refrain from eating the sciatic nerve because God told us not to at some point. Right? Those stories hint at something that God is going to do later, but uh, I think the Rambam is entertaining the possibility, conceptually, that had God not commanded us to do Brit Milah, we would not have to. Just because Avraham did does not mean anything from a perspective of it being ob obligatory. Okay, a little bit of a tangent, but interesting one. Okay. Let's 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 uh, talk more about this uh, concept of Ein Ma'arvin Simcha V'Simcha. Um, let's look at source number five. Five. Source number five. Let me uh, let me scroll so you can see it. Source number five. This is again from the Rambam. Laws of Yom Tov. Excuse the typo. I can fix it on the screen, but can't fix it on for you. Laws of Yom Tov. Chapter six, halacha sixteen. Ain roin et hanigaim b'moed shema yimatze tamei v'nimtza chago nefach la'aver. Not only are we not allowed to mix joyous occasions, we're not supposed to do anything 
that will ruin a happy occasion. So for example, we do not inspect leprous blotches on Cholamoid because if the person is then declared impure, that's going to ruin their Yom Tov. So we delay, we delay that practice until after Yom Tov. Okay, right. No COVID testing on, on Cholamoid, right? That's a good, that's a good parallel. Um, and then the Rambam says, Ve'ein no sin nashim below miyabmim bimoed. We do not marry nor perform the act of yibum, right? Which is when, uh, quickly, yibum is if a woman's husband dies before they have children, the deceased husband's brother is obligated to marry the widow. And that's called yibum special type of marriage. Now we don't do that anymore. We do something called chalitza, which is a special type of ceremony that frees the couple from their obligation to marry. But the yibum is this, what's called in English, leveret marriage. Okay, we do not do that. Why? Kedei shelo tishtakeach simchag, simcha tachag, simcha tanesuin. So that the happiness of the festival will not be obscured by the happiness of the marriage. So now we're getting to understand why we have this halach. Ein me'arvin simcha besimcha. We don't do these things because we want to give each simcha its due. Right? We want to give each happy occasion the proper mental space, spiritual space, or celebratory mood. Right? But if we start mixing, then we can't really focus on either of them. And they're going to, in this case, actually the Rambam says it's not that we won't focus on either of them. But the simcha of getting married will outshine the simcha of the festival. And therefore, the simcha of the festival is going to, in some way, uh, be uh, dis, uh, uh, dishonored. Okay? Bye. Rabbi, what about... Hold on, Shula, hold on one second. One second, yes? We shouldn't really give love and credit for, for like, no one's Well, uh, he, he Can you please repeat the question? The question was, uh, we shouldn't give love on credit for figuring this out because he seems to have been mixed up in other areas. It's true, Lovin was not um, such a savory character, um, but he's, on, this, on this, he was following local custom. And, and the truth is, it's not a question whether he figured it out. What he seems to be indicating is this is the local custom. Local custom is we don't marry the younger before the, for the older. And local custom is we wait seven days after one wedding before allowing a man to take a second wife. Um, Rabbi? Hold on. What, oh, yes, what, go ahead. What about um, twins bar mitzvah to boys? Ah, twins bar mitzvah. So that's a good question. Um, this, the question is, it, it, what, what's, is, is that, does that constitute a simcha? Um, and so this, the, the twins have their bar mitzvah on the same day because the bottom line is, all that you have to, you don't have to do anything. There's no required celebration of a, sim, of a bar mitzvah. It happens automatically. You wake up on your 13th birthday, you're bar mitzvah. You wake up on your 12th birthday, you're bar mitzvah. You don't even need kichel. <laughs> I know people don't know that. You do not need a kiddush to become bar mitzvah. It's a shocking thing. Uh, I know people are going to think I'm not really uh, religious by saying such a thing. No. Um, okay. but, uh, so I'm not sure if that constitutes, uh, there's nothing to do. Now we have, then we have the, the kids sometimes read the Torah. And, and I think the difference That's would sad. be, I think the difference would be Shula is that the, there's a, a bracha that is recited, right? Baruch Shepetarani me'on I, I think the custom is that is said for each one. Meaning if you only say the bracha once, then you're, then you're mixing them together. I think the, the, the practice is to say them one for, for each of the twins. Anyway, okay. it's not a lacha. Sure it is. Of course it is. Oh. Yeah, yeah. We, we saw the Rambam, the Shulchan Aruch says it. Of course it's a halacha. Yeah, this is a halacha. Yes. So then, so on, we, oh, we do bury, the question, the question is what about uh, Yom Tov and funerals? Um, so we do... Technically speaking, one is allowed to do a burial on the second day of Yom Tov. Uh, Gentiles do it, but we don't, it's not a common practice because we don't live close enough to the cemeteries anymore. 
So that, that is done. And the reason that is done is because there you have the biblical obligation to do the burial as quickly as possible, which overrides this, although some people say this is an, a biblical ob obligation uh, as well. So morning, morning we put off. Yeah, that's hard. And that's sort of a similar idea that the, the sort of the national joy of the holiday, it also cancels Shiva, right? If you, if you observe Shiva for five minutes and then Pesach starts, it's over. Yeah. Yeah. The person dies in the middle of the festival, they do the burial, but not Shiva. After the festival ends, right. But you don't, you do the burial and then you sort of wait and then you do Shiva after Yom Tov. But the second day of the second days counts as the first day of Shiva. Okay, so we try to, we draw a fine line. Okay, let's look at a couple of other sources and then we're gonna look at a real, a, a real case study. Uh, okay, so uh, we're now uh, in source number six, which is the Arach HaShulchan. And he says, he, he echoes the Rambam, source number six on page three. Uh, we do not do weddings, whether it's the first wedding for the bride or, 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 or not, or a second or third wedding for the bride. Below miyabmim, we don't do yibum either. That that marriage of the brother-in-law dichtiv, and here, uh, what the Aruch Hashulchan does, which the Rambam did not do, was he gives us the uh, psukim. He says why v'samachta bechagecha, you should rejoice in your festival, v'lo beishtecha, and not about your new wife, right? So the Yom Tov deserves its own, it gets its own spot. And we're concerned, like we said before, that the marriage is going to overshadow Yom Tov. The Ein Me'arvin, Simcha, the Simcha. And we do not mix or combine one Simcha with another Simcha. A similar thing is a similar concept. We don't do mitzvot in bundles. So that when we're doing the one particular mitzvah, we're focused on that mitzvah itself. Similarly, our hearts, our minds have to be open to that simcha. And where do we learn this from? The Alfinan Ze Mishlomo. We learn this from Shlomo. That's the Gemara we said, the first Gemara we saw. On page one, source one, we learn this from Shlomo. Kishegamar binyan Beit Hamikdash asa chag shiva yamim. When he finished building the Beit Hamikdash, he did a seven-day holiday. Kodem hachag before Sukkot. Kedei shelo la arev simcha zo v'simcha tachag. So as not to mix the celebration for finishing the temple with the celebration of Sukkot. And then he quotes the Talmud Yerushalmi which is the source that quotes our Parsha, Uvi Yerushalmi Yalif La Midichtiv Malay Shivu Azot. The Talmud Yerushalmi, the Jerusalem Talmud, learns it from our verse, finish off these seven days of the, of the wedding before uh, you marry, uh, the seven days of the wedding celebration with Leah before you go to marry uh, Rachel. Okay. He talks about the, why do we need two explanations for this? Why, why, why is the temple example good enough? We're not, we're not gonna get into those uh, specific details. Okay, so now let's see uh, some examples of what's considered to be uh, simcha, not to be a simcha. For example, let me ask you this question. Can you get married on Purim? Why, what about Ein Me'arvin Simcha B'Simcha? Let's have a vote. Can you get married on Purim? Yes or no? Raise your hand if you say yes. First, I'll count the people in the room here. Four yeses. What about you guys, Shula? Yes, Nitza? I can't hear you or see you. I have to move your screen down a little bit. I Sarah? do not know, but I think, I think it's you 
Cohen. So says yes. Nitsa, what do you say? I think you're allowed to marry. Okay, Nitsa. I said I don't know what they think, and I don't recall any wedding that okay. was done on Cohen. Sarah. I I would think that it should be allowed because. Uh, we have to increase the simcha. Ah, but the purpose here is we don't mix simchas. We, that's the that's what we're concerned about. We're concerned that one simcha is going to be ignored. Okay, right. uh, Colin, Chana, Linda, what do you guys say? I say yes, you can. Okay. I didn't hear the question. Can you repeat, Rebbe? If you get married on Purim. Oh, if you can get married on Purim? That's the question. Oh. Uh, maybe yes, because it's not a holiday from the Torah. Okay, could be. Linda? Chana said maybe yes, but it's not a holiday from the Torah. Okay, let's see. It's actually a big machloket, as is everything. That's always, by the way, the right answer to the question. It's a machloket. You're almost never going to be wrong. All right, here we go. Bottom of page three. Uh, like a disagreement. That's not a that's not a machloket. Okay, here we go. We are in source number eight. Mutar Lisa Isha Bipurim. Bottom of page three. One is permitted to get married on Purim. So apparently Purim is not a simcha. Or not, not a simcha that rises to that level that we care so much that it's going to be overshadowed by the wedding. But we said you can't even get married on Cholamoid, which is, that's true. That's true. It could be a difference. That's true. Okay. However, the Magen Avraham in source number nine disagrees. He's commenting on the Shulchan Aruch that we just read. He says, well, there's a question. What about this notion of not mixing one Simcha and another Simcha? How could the Shulchan Aruch say you can get married on Purim? As is on, as he wrote elsewhere, and we learned it from a Pasuk. Maybe our Pasuk he's talking about about Yaakov, Rachel, Leah, and Lava. How could it be possible that you could com combine the simcha of the wedding and the simcha of Purim? Sort of like, I think what Chana said and what Eli said, the Rashba writes, maybe the difference is that these, the Purim is a rabbinic holiday. I know you can be lenient on this when it comes to rabbinic holiday. So according to one, it may be it's stricter, but in some, some people say it's we're more lenient. And that may be the difference. We're going to see that explained explicitly elsewhere. So it could be that maybe one way to define what's a simcha is what's biblical, what's not biblical. What would be an interesting question is what if you have two rabbinic things going head to head? Yeah. Can you get married on Hanukkah? People get married on Hanukkah all the time. Right? So that's interesting too. Okay. Now, I want to look at a real case. You have a question or a comment, Miriam? The simcha of Purim can increase hold the simcha. On, Hannah, Hannah, hold on one second. So, one can, so Miriam is bringing up the notion that maybe we have a distinction between Purim and Hanukkah because Hanukkah, all you have to do is light candles at night, but Purim has a lot of other obligations which have to be done in a short order during the day. And so maybe if you have a wedding on that day, really Purim will be overshadowed, but Hanukkah might not. That's an interesting dis distinction. What's that? You could have a, a costume wedding, yeah. Okay, Hannah, please. 
unmute, unmute. That what I wanted to say, that you can have a custom pouring. So it increases the simcha and everybody is like double happy. Well, like there is... the Shulchan Aruch agrees with you, so you're in good company. Ah, okay. Kalati ledatam shel gdolim, good. Yes, yes. Okay, so on page five. My uh, question is, oh, yes, Nitsa. Which, side, which simcha is more important, the Chag or the wedding? Ah, that's a good question. So it seems that uh, so far what we've seen is that it's not that one is more important, but I think what the what these sources are indicating is human nature. Human nature is that one is going to pay more attention to the simcha of their new wife than they right. are to the chag. That's so, wonderful. That, that is wonderful. That's great. What is That's, more important? Why can't we do that during chag? Because the, then the chag is going to lose. It, people are not going to pay attention to the chag. And it's not a question of which one is more important, but we want each one to have its, its due respect. Yeah. Okay. Let's look. This is a... a on page, uh, on page five is the cover page of a collection of Shelotu Chubot, volume seven, uh, from the Kolel Eretz Chemda, which uh, is a wonderful uh, group of students, Tamidi Chachamim in Eretz Yisrael, who, uh, take who study for high level rabbinic exams, but they also take questions from around the world. And I sent in this question, you see on page 12, on page six, I'm sorry, source 12, you see this question comes from Texas, USA. I don't remember, um, this was Tufshin Ayin. Now we're in Tufshin Pei Gimel. So this was 13 years ago. What? 13 years ago. We had this question. I don't remember the families involved, but we had a situation where there was going to be a Brit Milah on Shabbos afternoon and a Sheva Brachot. The couple, a couple was in town. It was a Sheva Brachot. So they were going to be in shul on that afternoon. And I wanted to know if we could have the Brit Milah and the Sheva Brachot sort of at the same time because of this question of Eid Me'arvin Simcha B'Simcha, right? And here's the question, the first arrow, She'ela, Ha'im nitan la'aroch b'mazgeret su'udat Shabbat, su'udat Sheva Brachot, u'su'udat Brit Milah. Is it permitted within the context of a Shabbos meal to have the su'udat of the Sheva Brachot, which would include the Sheva Brachot at the end of benching, and the su'udat of the Brit Milah? Um, they both have additions. And also they have different introductions. So that was also a question, which one to do? And the next question is, oh, oh, or this is a problem of not mixing in, not mixing up two joyous occasions. And then I said, if we, then, I, then the question was, if we're allowed to do this, which benching, meaning which introductory phrases of benching do you do? Nusach berkat hamazon v'shev brachot v'sudazo, which one? Okay. So the answers are short, but the footnotes are long. So we'll just look at a couple of them. So first in Aleph, which is the second arrow, the answer is Nitan Laaroch Sudat Shabbat Shetishamesh Gam Kisudat Brit Mila Vikhain Kisudat Shavabrachot. They said we are allowed to have this one Shabbos meal. I think it was a Shal Shudas, but I'm not sure. It's, that will both be the meal for the Brit Mila and the meal of the Shavabrachot. The Ain Bikach Mishun Ain Ma'arvin Simcha Basimcha. There is this is not. An issue. We're not concerned here with the prohibition of mixing these two joyous occasions together. And nor are we concerned with the problem of doing um, of doing 
uh, mitzvot in bundles. Okay, but the, the, the way this, the, this response works is they give you the answer and they give you the explanation in the footnote. So if you look on, on the bottom, uh, the, 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 in the photocopy, the underlying is very faint, but it's there in footnote number two. As you want to, it's, it's clearer on the screen, by the way. If you look on the screen. Okay. Let me see if I can make it even bigger. All right, that's better, right? Okay. So it says on the screen, She'isur ze shayach rak b'shtei pu'ulot nifradot mahutan hana'asot yachad. So now they're giving us the conceptual understanding of this prohibition. The conceptual understanding of this prohibition is it only applies when there are two separate things that are done, right? That you do together, two separate activities that you do together, and it does not apply, well, what would that be? That would be celebrating Sheva Brachot and doing a wedding. That's the problem with, with Yaakov and Rachel. But when you're just having one meal, and in that one meal, there happens to be a bris celebration and a Sheva Brachot celebration, okay, that's one thing. We're there together, but you haven't Combine them, they just exist at their own time. They exist together on their own. That's the distinction, right? The lob blachat she yotzim by de chovash shte mitzvot. And he goes on to say on the bottom, Divarim ela nitrachim, gami min hakapashut shel shiluv sudat mila, o sheva brachot bilvad, im sudat shabbat, lo shiluv shel shastan. In the footnotes, he points out on Shabbos. Although I think there's a hole in this theory, but on Shabbos we have Sheva brachos all the time, and we have brises all the time. How are you allowed to have a Shabbos meal with a Sheva brachos? That also seems to be mixing Shabbos and the Sheva brachos. How could you have a bris mila meal on Shabbos? That also seems to be mixing. What's the so he says? Well, the answer is because there it happens to be one meal, and both of those things are happening. I don't think it's a great answer. Anyone, could anyone, anyone want to take a venture, a guess as to why I don't think it's a great answer? Can you summarize the whole question again? The Shabbos, Bracha, wedding? Shabbos and let's say Shabbos and a bris and a, and a, and a Shabbos. So why am I allowed to do that at all? I'm mixing two things. True. I can't control what the bris is going to be, but I don't have to have, the, I don't have to. I don't have to do anything at the meal. No, goodbye. No, but the meal, I'm saying, forget that. Just Shabbos and one Simcha. His point is that this, his conceptual understanding must be right, that if it happens on its own, it's not a problem because all the time we have a bris milah celebratory meal on Shabbos, but it's and, and the right, we, the, the, so the meals, not the, we can't, you're right, we can't delay the bris meal. But the meal, we don't have to, we could, we could pretend the bris meal didn't happen at the meal and say, oh, Shabbos is too important. We're only going to say say in the benching and not mention anything about the brit milah on the benching. Now, I don't think it's a great answer because there's no mitzvah to be, to be happy. There's no mitzvah of simcha on Shabbos. No, on Yom Tov, there's a mitzvah of simcha. There's no mitzvah, there may be a prohibition of being sad on Shabbos, but there's no mitzvah of being happy on Shabbos. So different things, right? There's no mitzvah of simcha on Shabbos. So anyway, but, but here he's actually, in this, case, he's actually referring, in this case, he's actually referring to um, the prohibition of not doing mitzvot combined with each other. But I think the same logic applies. And if you look in footnote, um, Number one, that's what he writes, right? Tamoshal Davar, who uh, this is sort of the third line. Uh, I'll show you here on this. On this, where are we here? Over here, 
Tamoshel davarhu mishum she'ein klal din simcha b'shabbat. Right, like I said, there's no mitzvah of simcha on uh, on Shabbos. The Shabbat came under oneg ketiv be simcha lo ketiv be. There's an obligation of oneg of enjoying, of pampering ourselves on Shabbat, but there's no mitzvah of simcha per se on uh, on Shabbat. Um, so that's why it wouldn't be a problem with having these other things on Shabbos, but that doesn't address why the Brit Milah and the Sheva Brachot are not uh, problematic. Um, well, I that's what we're talking about. Yeah, and Shabbat is not a simcha. And what we're seeing here also is doing the wedding is different than the natural, like Bobby Sue said, the natural aftermath of the wedding is Sheva Brachot, and that we're not creating, we're not doing anything to make that happen. That is happening on its own. And so therefore it's not a violation of this, of this principle. Yeah. I don't see a contradiction. I don't see a contradiction. Hold on, hold on, Hannah, hold on, please one second. Go ahead, Ellie. Yeah. Uh, the only problem was that is saying that um, you're allowed to mix the simcha of Shabbos with another simcha, but Shabbos doesn't have a simcha. But he wasn't really talking about that. I jumped the gun on that. What yeah. A wedding, a, so a wedding, like having a bris at a wedding, or having a wedding at a bris. So I think that may be problematic right? because you don't have to have the wedding there. It's not, right, the bris is happening. You don't have to have the bris there. Have it somewhere else. You know, go down the block and have it. Or wait till the wedding's over or have, the, have it before the wedding. That seems to me to be a purposeful combination, which I think they're saying is problematic as opposed to, okay, it happens to be that on that Shabbos, the couple was in the middle of Shabbos and the baby was on its eighth day. What are you supposed to do? We didn't do anything to create that moment. That moment just happened on its own. There's not much you could do about it. And we happen to be eating and everyone's there. It's one, it's one event that has those two things in it, right? Hold on one second. Hana, Hana's been waiting. Hana, go ahead. Unmute. Wait, I don't see a contradiction between the two, like doing Sheva Brachot and the, what was it? A brick Milah on, if it happens to be on Shabbat. It's one meal. Nobody said that we have to have two seudot. It happened to be one seuda. And in this one seuda, after the seuda, we can say the Sheva Brachot. And after that, we can do the Brit or do the Brit first and then the Sheva Brachot. I don't see a problem. There is no, I don't see a problem. Why there hey, well, is a problem? Okay, well, the, the issue, you, th that's what they said. They, they agree with you. But the other way to look at it is, you're not going to be able to, if you could make the argument, you're not going to be able to focus on one, you're not going to be able to focus on each of them, right? You're going to be too, maybe someone's going to be too focused on this, on the joy of the wedding and someone else is going to be too focused on the joy of the bridge. Okay. And then they're not going to have, they're not going to each have it. Now he says that doesn't apply here, especially in this case, because there's, there's, there's very little wiggle room here, right? You can't delay the bris and Sheva Brachos are, Right, there's the there's only one there's only one seven day period after a wedding. Right, you can't say I'm going to do the second seven day period because that's not the first seven days after the wedding. So that's why they said this was was not uh, was not uh, a problem. Can I ask a question? Hold on, Nitsa. Well, we were all celebrating, right? Let's say, you, let's say, it may, it may not be, it's different. I'm not sure equal or not, it's different, right? But, but if we go back to the love on and, uh, well, that's not, a, that's not a great example, because, the, right, they're the principles. But we are, right, there is an obligation for us to make the bride and groom happy, right? There is that obligation on us. Um, so, yeah, hold on, Marilyn, let me get uh, Nitsa. I'm trying to go back and forth here. Go ahead, Nitsa. Unmute. The question is, it's not in the same location. What does it matter? The, no, this question was, it was one Shabbat meal. 
one and, Shabbat meal, Sheva Brachot is in one location, but the Brit can be any, any no, time. No, but, but they, the, the Brit was in shul, and then the people were going to be eating at the same meal, and at the same meal, they were going to be having elements of the Birkat Amazon, which relate to both the Brit Milah and the Sheva Brachot. And so since they were going to be happening in the same place at the same time, uh, that's why I raised, I raised the question. You're right. If they were going to be in separate places, it wouldn't be a problem. It would be two different groups of people. But this... Uh, why don't they say it's not permitted on the same location and, far and finish with well, it? I didn't want to say it was not permitted unless it was not permitted. It is permitted. It is permitted in this case. It is. To, yeah, so that's why we did it. Yeah. We have place in our heart for the Sheva Brachot and the Brits, <laughs> and no problems, yes. <laughs> problem okay, solved. Hold on, hold on, Hannah. I, that's, that, that's the good attitude. I, that's, that's, the, that's the attitude we should have. Yes, for sure. Okay, yes, Marilyn. Would the benching be the ones for the Sheva Brachot? Because ah. that's really part of the celebration of doing that. Well, the, so let's see. So the question is, which benching did we do? So let's just, we'll, we'll end with this. If we look at um, page, we're now on page six again, still. And the third arrow. If you want to look at it on the screen, it's on the screen. Bisudazo, yazminu bimit. Konet haba'a. You should do the uh, introductory part of the benching with the following formula. Or metapiut nodel shimcha betoche munai, which is the which is the which is the brit milah part at the beginning of the benching. Kinahug besudat brit milah. So you right because there is a a different benching at the beginning of shavuot. So he's saying do the beginning part of. The bris in the footnotes. Hold on. Kishem magiim leguf hazimun dahainu birshut nivarech shachalnu yeshlomar nivarech elokeno shasim chabu nove shachalnu mishalo. But then when you get to the second half of the introductory part, we do birshut maranan rabanan rabotai. In that case, you should flip to the wedding part. Right. I don't. Know, I do not remember how I kept this straight in my head. Then you go. Then you flip to the wedding part. Kibichol Sudat Shabbat Sheva Brachot, like you do in every Sheva Brachot. Then you do Birkat Amazon regularly, like every Brit Milah Birkat Amazon, including the additional Harachamans, which are in the, uh, in the middle. And then at the end, you do Sheva Brachot. Okay, yes, so, so problem solved. Uh, problem solved. Now, the question is why. <laughs> the question is why. So if we look in the footnote, Footnote number three on the bottom of page six, but here on the screen, much bigger if you want to see. Ayin Sheva Talevi, he quotes another source here. Sheneshal besudat brit milah biyachadim sheva brachot. Same question that I asked. But he was asked, im yomru kodem devai haser o no shimcha. Which beginning part of the benching, devai haser, which is the wedding part, or no shimcha, which is the brit part, which one do you say first? And he says, This is very interesting. Both of these introductory parts of the Brit benching or the wedding benching, they were not established specifically for those occasions. Ella, these were existing liturgical poems. And at some point, the rabbi said, let's use this one for a wedding and let's use this one for a Brit. But there's no inherent connection between those sentences, those passages and a wedding or the other ones and a Brit. So he says, uh, th this author. I don't know if you have to do both of them. They both made up for happy occasions. We chose one for a wedding. We chose the other one for a Brit. But uh, they're really interchangeable. So just pick one and do it. 
מכל מקום לא יהיה שאומרים שניהם. לו יש אומרים שניהם, מכל מקום נראה דיקדימו דבי הסר ואחר כך נראה שכבר. אם אתה רוצה לעשות את שני אלה, אתה צריך לעשות את הראשון הראשון, ואז אתה צריך לעשות את הברית הראשון. אבל בנושא שלנו, הם אמרו את זה אחרת, הם אמרו את זה רק לעשות את הראשון הראשון, 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 do the Shabbat Brachot for the wedding at the, end of the at the end of the wedding, at the end of the Birkat HaMazon, everyone's happy, everyone's got a little bit of something, and we're not in violation of Ein Ma'arvin Simcha B'Simcha. So that, that, that's what the Shevet HaLevi is saying. No, we're not making a statement, because none of them, neither of them are really specific for that event. And so you'd maybe just choose the one you like better. Correct, but now you know. Okay. All right. Yashikoach, everyone. Thank you for coming. So the Brit Milah we should do first, Nafon? He's not talking about the Brit Milah, actually. He's talking about which part of Birkat Amazon do you do first. Right, I got you. But hey. isn't it that Brit Milah is mitzvah memarim la'asuta? Like you every should... mitzvah, every mitzvah, mizrizim ah. ma'im the mitzvot applies to every mitzvah. So is there a seder chashivut or no? Seder, what is in more, which mitzvah will be more important? So, so there is the sometimes if, 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 if a mitzvah, if you're not going to be able to do the mitzvah, if you delay it, that would come first. Um, there are other, there, there are, there are, So we want to make sure that we're certainly not going to uh, lose out the chance to do, to do a mitzvah. It depends if other people could do the mitzvah instead of you. That's another factor that, that uh, comes into place. Um, but in this case, again, the wedding had taken place already. The Brit was on Shabbat. So it wasn't a question of which one to do, which one to do yeah. first. Nahon, yeah. Ooh, do okay, do do a Thank you tonight. so much for coming. I'm going to stop the recording now and we continue schmoozing, but thank you so much for coming. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, everybody.